Would you join with me in prayer asking our gracious Lord to bless both the preaching and the hearing of his word. Reminded, Heavenly Father, that we have the great and glorious privilege of of having the revelation of your mind and a reflection of eternal truth in our language translated for our edification in our Bibles. We pray today that you would give us ears to hear, minds to think, hearts to embrace, and wills to choose the truth of Christ's resurrection. We grant, we pray that you would grant your mercy through the power of your spirit in the manifestation of your grace to that end. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have your Bibles with you, turn to John's Gospel, chapter 20. Each of the Gospel accounts speak in their own manner about the resurrection of of Jesus Christ. I particularly like this particular aspect of the story when John tells about Thomas coming to understand that Jesus was in fact alive, truly, genuinely, and really. Beginning with verse 24 of the 20th chapter of the Gospel of John, we read God's word together. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, or the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples were saying to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the imprint of the nails... And put my finger into the place of the nails. And put my hand into his side. I will not believe. After eight days his disciples were again inside. And Thomas with them. Jesus came. The doors having been shut. And Jesus stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Reach here with your finger and see my hands. Reach here your hand and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. Thomas answered, And said to him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, because you have seen me, have you believed? Blessed are they who did not see and yet believed. This is the word of the Lord. May his name be eternally praised. Simple outline for you today. As we think about the resurrection of Jesus Christ through the lens of this text of Scripture. We'll talk about three things. First, the historicity of Jesus' resurrection. Then we'll think together about the theology of his resurrection. And then we'll conclude with reflections on personal faith. In the resurrected Christ. My title today is simply this. Jesus lives. Do you get it? Let's begin with the historicity. Of Jesus' resurrection. What are we saying here? 
We're simply saying that the text of Scripture presents the resurrection of Jesus Christ not as a myth, not as a legend, not as a story that is made up to read at bedtime, but rather the text of Scripture, not just the one we read today, but each of the gospel accounts and how they record it, and each New Testament epistle and how it talks about it, clearly states without question or doubt that Jesus Christ physically, materially, in history, rose from the dead. He rose from the dead. It is a matter of history. We see it here in the testimonies of those who saw Jesus Christ as the resurrected Lord. We see it in the skepticism of Thomas who refused to believe that he was alive on the basis of what he heard. But demanded to see the prince, the scars in his hands and the scar in his side. And literally perhaps even touch the body of Jesus Christ. Only then would he believe. All of this argues to the fact that Jesus Christ is physically in body alive. We see in the story the confrontation of, G of Thomas by Jesus. And indeed the confession of Thomas itself. That speaks of the resurrection of our Lord and Jesus, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I would make the following observations regarding the historicity of Christ's resurrection. One, Jesus really did die on the cross. There are those who would, with great silliness, argue that Jesus simply passed out on the cross and when they laid his body in the cool, damp tomb, that it revived him from his being passed out. That's not the word. That's not the testimony. And that is not the assertion of the New Testament. As we can see here in this text and others as well, that there was no one who followed Jesus as a disciple who believed that he was alive. They saw him die. They believed him dead. And not one believed he would rise from the dead. However, the text of scripture indicates clearly and states forthrightly that Jesus Christ presented himself to his disciples over many days as one resurrected from the dead. Indeed, the very Sunday night that Jesus rose that morning, Jesus appeared to his disciples minus Thomas. And he presented himself as the sovereign, as the one who is alive from the dead. Thomas thought he knew what evidence was. He thought he knew what would convince him that Jesus was indeed alive from the dead. But Thomas did not truly understand evidential experience. But when Thomas saw Jesus, not only was he absolutely convinced without a question or doubt, that Jesus Christ was alive, he also came to understand instantaneously what the resurrection meant. He realized that Jesus was, as the resurrected Savior and Lord, exalted and adored and edified as the one alive from the dead, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Jesus historically rose from the dead. Well, let's think together about the theology of that. Yes, he is alive from the dead. But I would press the question to you here today. Not only do you believe that Jesus is physically alive, but do you understand what it means? 
Do you understand the theology of his resurrection? One has said the resurrection of Jesus in itself was the most glorious event that ever came to pass. I would agree. What theological truths are contained in the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? First, this teaches us that the resurrection of Jesus is central to the gospel itself. 1 Corinthians 15, the word of God says, Christ died for our sins. He was buried and he was raised the third day. This is the first things relative to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let us not drop the resurrection of Christ from the gospel itself. Second, this indicates that Jesus Christ is indeed God. Romans 1 states, Jesus, who was declared the Son of God with power by the resurrection from the dead, according to the Spirit of holiness, Jesus Christ our Lord. Those who embrace Jesus Christ must embrace Him as God in human flesh. Third, this also indicates that Jesus rose from the dead in victory over death and sin and evil. Ephesians 4 says, therefore it says, when he ascended on high, he led captive a, a host of captives and he gave gifts to men. He ascended far above all the heavens so that he might fill all things. He is the Lord of all. He has authority over all things. And even the devil himself must submit to the Lord Jesus Christ. In the words of the Apostle Paul in Colossians 1. He was raised from the dead. That he would come to have first place in everything. John would write in the final book of the Bible. In the first chapter. Jesus Christ the faithful witness. The firstborn from the dead. The ruler of of the kings of the earth. Behold. He is coming in the clouds. And every eye. Will see him. In these difficult days. In which we live today. Every child of God. Must look up with hope. And with joy and anticipation. Knowing that there is no president. There is no congress. There is no dictator. That can turn away. Jesus' authority. He is the Lord of God. Oh. And then we know the resurrection of Jesus means that we as believers in him have victory in and through the resurrected Christ. 1 Corinthians 15 is the classic chapter that teaches us the significance of the resurrection of Jesus. I quote only a portion. There we read the following if we have hoped in Christ in this life only, we are of all men most to be pitied. But now, he says, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who fall asleep. For in Adam all die, so also in Christ all will be made alive. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. And the last enemy will be death. It shall be abolished. And all things subjected to him. So that God may be all in all. And when this perishable will put on the imperishable. And this mortal immortality. Then will come about the saying that is written. Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh death. I mock you. Where is your victory? Oh death. Where is your sting? Thanks be to God. Who gives us the victory. Through our Lord. Jesus Christ. I am moved. Yea gripped. By the words of Jesus. To the grieving sister Martha. After she buried her brother. And Jesus said to her, I 
am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. That is our victory. That is our glory. That is our hope. That even in physical death, we do not die as God's children. But rather we live eternally in heaven forever. And one day our bodies, the very bodies that are buried, will rise and be fashioned like Christ's glorious body. When Jesus was preparing his disciples for his death, he said this in John 14. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. After a little while, the world will not see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you will live also. In that day you will know, he said, that I am in my Father, you in me, and I in you. All the theology of the Christian faith centers on the cross and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is the gospel message that we preach. May God help us to preach the true gospel as long as we live. Third, not only do we think today about the historicity of the event and the theology of it, but the vital necessity of personal faith in Jesus Christ. No mistake about it. Thomas, who skipped out on Sunday night church. When Jesus walked through the walls or the door and stood in the presence of those disciples on the very day he was raised from the dead. And oh, with great joy and excitement, they reported to Thomas, we saw him, he's alive, it's true. He was, as is commonly called, a doubting Thomas. He didn't get it. He didn't get it. And he didn't get it because they got it. He didn't get it because they got it. And he wasn't going to get it just because they got it. He was a skeptic. I saw him die. I know it was dead. People do not come back to life. He might have said. And unless I personally, physically put my hand on his body. And know that it's him. I will not believe. Belief is at the center of the story. The very next Lord's Day. They gathered again. The disciples and this time they persuaded Thomas to join with them. Forgive me, I hope I have a sanctified imagination this morning. But I can imagine, can't you, in the room, the disciples going, I can't believe it. Not only have we seen Jesus, but we're getting reports that he's showing up everywhere. People are coming and telling us, He's alive, he's alive, he's a, alive. And there's Thomas sitting in a chair in a corner like this. He doesn't get it. And he ain't going to get it just because they get it. And suddenly, notice how the text says this. It doesn't say Jesus opened the door. It doesn't say anyone opened the door for him. Notice the text of scripture. Verse 26 of our text. Jesus came. The doors. Having been shut. And stood in their midst saying. Peace be unto you. I, I, I think to be honest with the text. I believe it strongly hints. At the idea that Jesus. Either walked through the door. Or just materialized in their midst. And yet. He physically. Was there. 
This would be a wonderful side street to go down in terms of talking about the transcendent resurrected body. And I commend to you 1 Corinthians 15 where Paul argues about the heavenly body and what it will be like. And Philippians 3, we're told that, that our resurrected bodies will be fashioned after Christ's resurrected bodies. I won't spend long on that except to say that not only do we live following physical death, but we will also have a resurrected body that will be ours in the day of the resurrection. Jesus was physically transcendently, metaphysically there in reality. Again, my imagination soars. As Jesus comes into that room and as disciples respond and react, oh, there he is, Jesus. It is my decided conviction that Jesus probably doesn't spend much time with Peter and some of the other disciples. He looks right at Thomas, sitting there like this, maybe like this now, or maybe like this. And he makes a beeline to Thomas. What's going on in Thomas's mind as Jesus approaches him? Oh no, I wish I hadn't said that. What was, I, what was I thinking? Or was he overwhelmed by the moment? The text doesn't say he fell on his knees, but in my mind I can't help but wonder, did he fall on his knees? The text simply says, Thomas said, my Lord and my God. Even though Jesus offered his hands, Thomas didn't reach and touch him. It doesn't indicate it. But he suddenly, redemptively, mentally, intellectually, spiritually came to realize that Jesus is alive. And he Got it. My Lord. And my God. There are people in this room today. And watching by live stream. Who claim to believe. That Jesus is alive. But by their lives. They don't seem to get it. If someone asks you. Do you believe Jesus rose from the dead? You might say, oh, yes. I go to church on Easter Sunday. But what about your life? What about the rest of the year? How do you make moral decisions? By what measurement of right and wrong are you following? Are you following the culture? Are you, are you following the society? Are you following the prevailing power? The ideologies and philosophies of this world? Or do you get it? Thomas knew Jesus was alive and he became a theologian of the resurrection. My Lord, my God, my boss, my leader, the one I worship, my shepherd, my sanctifier, the one who prepares a place in heaven for me, the one who providentially watches over me, I will follow you as my Lord and God. Do you get it? Brothers and sisters in Christ, to you I speak. I pray that you and I will get it. And understand that because Jesus was crucified for us and he rose again and ascended back to heaven. And sits at the right hand of the Father as our high priest and mediator. And the one who has promised to come again 
as the champion of human history to restore justice and righteousness and salvation to the world. Brothers and sisters in Christ, on this Resurrection Day celebration, let us rejoice. Our sins are forgiven. Christ, the risen one, has given us eternal life. He is our boss. He is our Lord. When we get sick and when we come to death, death cannot defeat us. We are His forever. We have a home in heaven with God. The hope of our world is the Messiah who came out of the tomb. Charles Wesley, in his what's commonly called the Easter hymn, writes, Vain the stone, the watch, the seal, Christ has burst the gates of hell. Death in vain forbids him rise. Christ has opened paradise again. Soar we now where Christ has led following our exalted head. Made like him, like him we rise. Ours the cross, the grave, and the skies. I've never seen like the day like we're living in today. But I assert to you with all of the conviction of my heart that no matter that what changes may occur in society, in the nation, even in the organizational church, nothing of eternal reality will have changed. One day, the world will come to understand that that empty tomb changed everything. And we will face him and we will deal with him, the one crucified and risen from the dead. I urge you, if you were to ask me, pa Pastor, what, what would you want me to get from this service? I urge you, don't be a plastic Christian. Don't be one who tips the cap to Jesus a couple times a year. Get real. My prayer is that you get it. Let us pray. Lord, I know that I reflect many people here and watching online who would join together their hearts, our hearts, to say thank you, Lord. That we got it. Jesus said. Blessed are those who have not seen the physical body of Jesus. And yet believed. We know that belief is born by the power. Of your saving will. The ministry of your spirit. By the power of your grace. And we do not take credit for the faith we have. We praise you for it. I cannot help, Father, but pray for those, some of whom may be listening to my voice even now, who just don't seem to get it. They live their lives day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, as if it didn't matter whether Christ was raised or not. I pray that you will stop them like you did Thomas. I pray that you would open their eyes and their minds, yea, their hearts, to this glorious truth. Reality centers on the resurrected Christ. Grant mercy to them, we pray, and bring them in. Thank you for the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In his precious name we pray. Amen.